In this video, we are going to discuss the anatomy associated with the rotator cuff muscles in the shoulder. The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. These four rotator cuff muscles all originate from the scapula, and they insert into the proximal humerus. Of all the rotator cuff muscles, the supraspinatus tendon is the one that is most often injured, but it can in most cases be compensated for. The subscapularis, on the other hand, is the largest and strongest of the four rotator cuff tendons, and it cannot be compensated for. Origin of the supraspinatus. It arises from the supraspinous fossa. The supraspinatus tendon is inserted into the superior facet of the greater tuberosity of the humerus. Function. The supraspinatus function, in conjunction with the other rotator cuff muscles, is to center the humeral head on the glenoid and maintain a six point of rotation. The supraspinatus simply helps to center and stabilize the humeral head so that the deltoid can exert its influence, which is abduction of the arm. Impingement of the supraspinatus tendon can lead to either partial or full thickness tear of the tendon with pain, loss of range of active motion, and weakness being the three most common symptoms. Usually, a tear due to injury will produce immediate intense pain in the deltoid region and weakness of the arm. The supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscles are both supplied by the suprascapular nerve C5-C6, which arises from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus. Testing the supraspinatus tendon for impingement involves several physical exam maneuvers, such as the Nears impingement test and the Hawkins impingement test, that involve passively moving the arm to compress the tendons and reproduce pain if impingement is present. Another common test is the empty can test, which assesses strength and pain during specific movements. Pain or weakness indicates supraspinatus tendon pathology. Now let's talk about the infraspinatus rotator cuff muscle. The infraspinatus is a thick, triangular-shaped muscle that lies on the posterior aspect of the scapula. Here you can see the location of the supraspinous fossa above the scapular spine, and the infraspinous fossa is below it. The infraspinatus muscle originates from the infraspinous fossa. The insertion of the infraspinatus tendon is in the middle facet of the greater tuberosity of the humerus. Function. The infraspinatus is the primary external rotator with the arm to the side, and it also helps to stabilize the humerus. External rotation of the shoulder occurs in conjunction with the teres minor. Innervation. The infraspinatus and supraspinatus, as mentioned before, are both supplied by the suprascapular nerve, C5, C6, which arises from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus. When tear of the infraspinatus tendon occurs, the patient will have dysfunction with external rotation of the arm. The infraspinatus is usually tested by testing the external rotation of the shoulder with the arm to the side. Here is an example of testing external rotation of the arm against resistance. Another example is the external rotation lag test. The examiner passively rotates the arm into full external rotation. There will be a positive test when the examiner lets go of the arm and the patient is unable to maintain the position of full external rotation. Next is the teres minor. 
The teres minor muscle is a narrow muscle that lies below the infraspinatus, and it is one of the four muscles of the rotator cuff. The teres minor originates at the lateral border and adjacent posterior surface of the scapula. It inserts into the greater tuberosity of the humerus. Function The teres minor muscle is involved in external rotation of the arm along with the infraspinatus muscle. However, the infraspinatus muscle is the primary external rotator of the arm. Innervation The teres minor muscle is innervated by the posterior branch of the axillary nerve. The axillary nerve is a continuation of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and carries nerve fibers from C5 and C6. When testing the strength of the teres minor muscle, the hornblower's test is used to test external rotation of the arm against resistance. Weakness or pain can indicate a possible tear. The fourth rotator cuff muscle is the subscapularis. The subscapularis is the largest and most powerful of the rotator cuff muscles, which lies over the anterior surface of the scapula. Origin The subscapularis originates on the subscapular fossa of the scapula. Its insertion is into the lesser tuberosity of the humerus and the front of the capsule of the shoulder joint. Function The subscapularis rotates the head of the humerus medially and adducts the arm. It is an internal rotator of the arm. Innervation of the subscapularis muscle comes from the upper and lower subscapular nerves the posterior cord C5, C6, and C7. Testing the subscapularis muscle. Two common tests used to assess the integrity of the subscapularis, the belly press test and the liftoff test. The belly press test is often used as an alternative to the liftoff test. As we said before, the subscapularis is an internal rotator of the arm. When performing the belly press test, have the patient place the hand on their abdomen and pressing back on the elbow will test the integrity of the subscapularis muscle. Failure to maintain a forward position of the elbow suggests a subscapularis tendon injury. Thank you for watching this video. This concludes our video on the anatomy associated with the rotator cuff muscles in the shoulder. We will discuss other important anatomy associated with the arm and shoulder region in additional videos.